Here we are at the tractor show. Today we're at the New York Steam Engine Association pageant of steam and it's me, my dad, and my son and my daughter. So we're gonna head inside and see what they got. <laughs> Okay, sir. <laughs> I've been stamped. Well, let's see what all is here. This is a big flea market over here with all kinds of stuff in it. Flea market over there. Lots of people riding around on lawn tractors. And finally, tractors. These guys are even the right color. Here's an A that they made look like a 1066. Little 1066. And a low rider BN. People are clever. Look, it even says low crop. In this building, they've got all the giant stationary engines that the club has restored, and they are amazing. I think they're still working on this one. Look at the flywheel on that thing. It's gotta be 12 feet tall. And it's got two cylinders. There's one, two. The club has a lot of members that work on this volunteer and they get these things donated and then they spend a lot of time and money fixing them up and getting them running again. Inside the building is filled with ones that are actually working. So everything in this building is steam and it's run by a boiler that's out behind the building. So this is a Corliss. Cool old gauges. <laughs> These old engines are so peaceful, they just chug, chug, chug. This one used to be a generator at a power plant. And there's Henry, he's almost six feet tall, so you can see how tall these are. <laughs> and this is the boiler that runs those big engines. Got a name, Lucy, fueled by wood. That's the waste steam coming out the back of the building. Lots of beautiful old steam engines. All in running condition too. Here's a steam powered boat. Here's the boiler and here's the cylinders that drive the propeller. Steam engine, sawmill. That made her grunt a little bit. Part part tractor with a cross engine in it. Oiler up top here. And we haven't even scratched the surface yet. There are so many tractors here. You can't see this really in a day. People stay here for the whole week. Here's an old corn picker, two rows. Takes the cob off the stock, brings the cobs up the belt here. Got a rider platform. Takes the husk off the cob, sends it up the chute and into the wagon. We're on this side, we got lots of stationary engines, hit or miss engines. All this area with the campers through here is all people that set up and they sell used tractor parts. And you can find a diamond in the rough here, but you gotta spend a lot of time looking because it's all mixed up. You just gotta go through and look at it all. Here's all kinds of little steam-powered creations we'll take a look at. I think they're powered with compressed air now. Little engines, hand-built. Here's a little teeny steam engine with a generator on it, lighting up the sign. Little wood splitter. Little tiny sawmill, just like the version we saw in full size a few minutes ago. What amazes me is the people that build these machines do it all. They machine the parts, they put them together, they get them to run. That's a labor of love, I think. This is the exact spot that I bought my 1020, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago. Saw it for sale, bought it, had to come back up here with a trailer and haul it home. Here's a giant old Caterpillar stationary engine pulley on the back for stationary power. 
Eight cylinders. Uh, this is the uh, little pony engine that you started with. We had these on the graders. You start this and then that turns up through the gear system, turns the engine over. Yeah. Fire. Two cylinders, one, two. at this it says SRAM on the top the front engine is an engine the back engine is actually an air compressor so that's a big air compressor Wow here's a whole row of Rumley oil pull tractors and the reason they were called oil pull is because they used oil for coolant which has a much much higher boiling point than water so they could run hotter and they worked better on distillate which burns at higher temperatures this is a monster rumbly oil pull biggest one here i'll bet look at these rear steel wheels i mean they're taller than i am wow amazing henry found the perfect tractor for him and here's another one a cleat track right next to it same size look at this one it's huge Wow, big gasoline tractor. Horizontally opposed four cylinder engine, two cylinders on each side. And look at this radiator, I and mean, it looks hand built. All these copper tubes, all individual here. I think this may be the biggest one here Altman Taylor 3060. Look at the size of this. Eight feet anyway. And again, gasoline tractor, but this one's got a cross engine on it. I don't know how many cylinders. Big old Caterpillar D8. Farm all M outfitted on a grader. These aren't that rare. A lot of them they did this to. And back in here they got all kinds of shovels and they moved the dirt around. Actually when Henry was a real little kid they let him run one. Sat in the guy's lap and pulled all the levers. Pretty cool. That was on a drag line. That one right there actually. What's this? We stay away from these tractors. Nothing to see here. I've never seen this brand before. It says Red Seal. Powerful as the nation. Picture of the Capitol on it. Looks like it's missing its head. Old manuals for anything you'd want. Cool old manufacturer's advertising literature. I think I actually have that one. This building is filled with small engines, stationary gas engines. For the most part, there's some mobile ones too on gear. This is a General Electric engine hooked to a generator and you know, General Electric was founded by Thomas Edison. I had no idea that they build engines. One of the cool things about these old engines that I love is the design hadn't settled down yet so every old engine you see has a little bit of a different kind of configuration this one's just got jugs for the cylinders probably to help keep them cool more and you can get into the crankcase that way everyone's different that's that's what's so interesting anybody interested in wrenches This is a Twin City tractor, and boy, it's built like a tank. This became Minneapolis Moline and is in the line with other Minneapolis Molines. Somebody made a Farm All M out of wood. Proves the rule. If you can think it, you can do it. Best part, look at all these old international farm malls. Here's a beautiful super. I'm somebody really paid attention to the detail on this one. Look at this. You can even lift up the side panels here to get access to things without pulling the hood off. It's all stainless steel bolts on sheet metal. Really nice. Really did a meticulous job on this one. Very nice. Good place for it. <laughs> Here's a 504 just like mine, except this is a Chisholm Rider high clear tractor. 
I think that Chisholm Rider was an aftermarket. They would modify these for high crop cultivation. Dad says this is what I really need. International truck. I'd be loving going to farmer's market in one of these. This tractor is a predecessor to my MD, and I think they started making these in 1925. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is a WD-40. Here's the injection pump. Starts just like the MD. Starts on gas, switches to diesel. And this is the gas side of the engine. Here's a 450. Probably had a corn picker mounted to it because it's got a snoot on the radiator to keep the radiator from getting clogged up with all the chaff and husk flying around from the picker. Super snoot. A super snoot. And a beastly diesel 600. Same starting system as the MD, but a giant engine in this. Injection pump side here. These are just monstrous tractors. Actually, here's the next version. It's a 650 diesel. Started the same way as the MD. Gas side and diesel side. Beautiful A. Yeah, we just, um... I really appreciate it when people restore tractors and they really pay attention to detail. Really nice. Okay. Look how tiny these little W12s are. 560 diesel, same diesel engine as my 656 but a generation earlier. And some really old internationals. Titan, made in the teens, I'm guessing there. And then an 816. I think these go for quite a bit of money now, the collectors. Radiator is in the back of the engine, so you can imagine how hot it was operating these. Blows the opposite way. WK40 came out the same time as the F-Series, and these are monster tractors. Six cylinders. This gentleman tells us this is the first four-cylinder international that was made in 1918 at the same time as the Titans and the Mogul. And it's got, it's horizontally opposed, right? Two cylinders side by side. Oh, I see them. Yep, two and two. This right here is an amazing part of history for me. It's a milestone for International Harvester. Old tractors like this had an oiler. And see that cam on that side drives the pump on the oiler over on the other side. And then each of those little screws on the top go to those pipes and oil a different component of the engine. So instead of having an integrated oil pump, you had lines running to each oil point on the engine. So this whole field is full of old tractors, gasoline, distillate, diesel. All different makes. Well, Oliver's here. 70, 70. Standard and row crop. An old one. Oliver Hart Parr. Oliver 80 standard. Fordston Major. Here's a 706 pull-in tractor, but I'll bet you there's something different under that cover than the original engine. They always got to hide that part. V8 powered M. Mopar. Huh. This one's even got a buddy seat. <laughs> this is an orchard tractor meant for working between the rows of trees and orchards so all the limbs would come over all the sheet metal. And what a restoration job these are with all the metal and straightening out the dents. See how the operator sat here and he's pretty protected from any branches that came up and over the tractor. Hey, what do we have here? Big. <laughs> Big fat tires. The reason there's so many red tractors here today is because International is the featured brand. 
and there's a field full of them right here. We're gonna go get some lunch now. It's 12 o'clock, you it? Everybody blows the whistle. Sausage sandwiches, salt potatoes, hamburgers, and hot dogs. Right, Henry? Yeah. I'm gonna go to the uh, flea market, I think. All right, see the couch Sure. This is a Baker fan. Air resistance on the fan blades work the engine on the tractor, and this is one of the ways you break in a new engine. Work it hard with a Baker fan, as long as you got the right size fan matched to the engine. It doesn't sound like it's working that steam engine very hard, though. Oh, it looks like we got a traffic jam here. Here's a full-size version of the toy wood splitter. Up and down and up and down. I don't know, I'd never run something like that. Looks too dangerous to me. We're gonna take a look around the flea market now. Here's the map, we are here. So I am going to check out each one of these booths. Maybe. This Miller Tire, probably a lot of you have heard of them. They sell hard to find tires for antique tractors and implements. This flea market stuff just goes on and on. These kinds of things just give me sensory overload. I can't look through all this stuff. I'm sure there's stuff I would be interested in, but oh man, it's been days here. Look, I found Prince Albert in a can. That's right, you gotta let them out. Old tailgates, they look good hanging on a wall somewhere. I think I know somebody that would like one of these. Life size too. I think he's really that tall. More tools, always looking for a good deal on tools. Small stuff. I can never have too many of these on the farm. Buck a piece. Dremel brushes. Well that does it for that flea market. And now it's time to look at the one that's got all the old equipment parts. This is the part of the show where some of the stuff is for sale and some of it's just on display. Well, I suppose everything's for sale for a price, but this is much different than the other flea market. Look at all these old washing machines. Wow. They just keep going. In the days before rural electrification, the washing machine had a little gasoline engine in it and this is how you started it. The kickstart. I want to show you this A because it has what used to be a fairly common attachment before hydraulic lifts. Of course, regular A doesn't have a hydraulic lift and this is an exhaust powered lift. So off of the manifold here, off the exhaust side of the manifold, there's piping that comes out to a control uh, piece on the other side and then that runs up and diverts the exhaust into this. There's a big cylinder in here. I think it's got leather seals on it and the exhaust pressure is what substitutes for hydraulic. There aren't a lot of them left working now because of course you're running exhaust through the cylinder, all kinds of soot and dirt. And, but it was an interesting system for back in the day before hydraulics were common. Well, it's getting pretty warm and I think we've seen what we want to see. So we're heading for the gate. I got to meet quite a few viewers today, which was really nice. Got to see some unique tractors, so it was a good day. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.